Hey guys, what is up? Public here, back with another video, and today we're talking about the Dragonflight pre-patch. Um, so, this is going to be kind of a quick and dirty survival guide for the spec, uh, just for the next couple weeks here until Dragonflight actually launches. When Dragonflight launches, I'll do more kind of in-depth stuff like I did in Shadowlands with how to play the spec and some more int intricacies with it, but I wanted to put something up that way. If anyone wanted kind of a video version of what I've already written on Icy Veins, you have this as kind of something to look at if you're unsure where to start with your Shadow Priest. So let's go and get started. Uh, okay, so there are quite a lot of changes going into Dragonflight. So the, the, one, the most notable one is the talent tree. So we have a brand new talent tree for the spec that has a lot of choices in it. There's there's quite a lot to unpack here. Uh, if you are just starting out and you kind of just want something to get started with, there are, uh, my, in my Icy Veins guide, in a talent build, whatever you want to, page you want to look at, there are plenty of builds linked there as like starting points for you to look at, as well as pins in the Discord and et cetera. So if you're kind of overwhelmed by this, that's okay. That That's somewhat understandable. There's quite a lot going on here. There's a lot of different ways you can build your Shadow Priest. Um, and what you can see right now, I'm actually on the beta because servers are not up yet. So you, you, you'll you see me have more points in available. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll get access to at least try things out, see how the spec plays. Note, you are missing some points like I mentioned. So um, which isn't as big of a deal in our, in our class tree over here. But in our spec tree, you'll only be able to get one point in this kind of bottom section or the capstone section um but this is where the majority of the changes are coming in for shadow priest they they have kind of done some base changes to the spec as well but a lot of that has just been folded into the talent tree um so i'll call out some of the main ones that you'll see in this video again i won't go into super in depth of how this works but um so the first one is the class tree so there's a lot of now shared utility things that all priests can get access to um, notably for us, Power Infusion and Twins of the Sun Priestess are, are massive. Twist of Fate is here. Mind Games is now uh, inside the class tree, so that is the only Covenant ability coming with us inside of Dragonflight. Uh, Vampiric Embrace is here. We're going to get Shadow Fiend and Shadow of Death quote for free. Um, it's also a couple other things as well. The other thing coming back from like a DPS perspective is Divine Star and Halo. Uh, so you'll pick up one of these guys depending on what kind of content you're doing. Uh, some kind of interesting points. We do get Angelic Feather as Shadow Priest, which is a very nice touch, um, getting, uh, giving us extra movement. So you can get this and Body and Soul, which is what we're using primarily in Shadowlands for movement. And then as far as the spec tree goes, this is where the majority of changes came into play. Uh, so the, the, the first change we'll talk about is our cooldown. So you now have a choice between Dark Ascension, which is a one-minute cooldown, or Void Eruption, which is, is a two-minute cooldown now. Um... These cooldowns don't have a whole lot of like definition or, or identity. Uh, it's going to kind of come down to like Sims and kind of when we're going to pick one versus the other. I will say, generally speaking, Dark Ascension seems to be kind of the avenue for single target, at least in pre-patch. And then Void Eruption is going to be kind of the AoE activator, uh, mostly because it's giving you mastery in all your targets that you're pressing for the duration of Void Form. They did slightly change Void Form going into Dragonflight. So um, now it is... Uh, as you spend insanity, it extends void form. So there's no longer hungering void extending our void form with our void bolts. It's now just, you know, spending our insanity. So if we kind of come into void eruption here, and you can see as I get ramping here, uh, we still have Shadow Flame Prison, as you can see. I'm extending that pet. But as I spend insanity, you can see that uh, void, void form as the buff is also going up. So this is kind of uh, a little bit of a mini game, so to speak, that they're trying to kind of part of what we were doing in Shadowlands, but um, but yeah, so that's what that's what this is doing. So that's the kind of main change to our cooldown. And note that is a there it's a one minute or a two minute cooldown. Both of those now sync up with power infusion and mind bender nicely. Um, note that if you don't take mind bender in the spec tree though, you still have Shadow Fiend, which is a three minute cooldown. Um, otherwise our cooldowns are, are much more nicely synced now. The other large change is we no longer have Searing Nightmare as a kind of AoE spender. They've instead reworked Mind Seer. So Mind Seer is no longer a filler spell that you press in AoE. It's now what you spend Insanity on during AoE. Um, it requires uh, 50 Insanity to kind of get going. And then once you are once you have that, you can, um, you can channel it. So what that looks like here. So if we kind of get our dots rolling, you see I don't have 50 Insanity yet. So it doesn't let me press Mind Seer. Once you get 50 Insanity, then you can channel it, and it consumes 25 per second. If it doesn't have 25 Insanity to consume, it stops its channel early. Um, so that's going to be the primary way that you're going to want to spend Insanity now. 
especially once you get to three targets. It's more break even at two targets, but that does kind of depend on talents. But just note that in AoE scenarios, when things are stacked, that's where you want to be spending your insanity. Um, and that's the kind of other large change. Uh, for the most part, this has a, you know, our AoE rotation is still kind of being figured out. It's a little bit messy, I'll be honest, but um, yeah, that's kind of, that's the large change to our AoE play style. It'll, it'll kind of feel a lot more like you're doing the single target rotation, but in AoE, except now you're replacing Devouring Plague with Mindseer. Otherwise, it kind of plays the same in single target. You do get some additions, like we can talent into Psychic Link for AoE and a couple other of the new idle spells, but otherwise it's going to be pretty similar. Now, as far as how we now spread our dots, since we don't have Steering Nightmare, they've given us, you have a choice note up here between Misery um, or Dark Void. Dark Void is a, a fixed 30 second cooldown that puts Shadow or Pain on 16 targets. Um, generates some insanity, but again, it's a 30 second cooldown and it's only Shadow Word Pain. Um, or you can get, or in addition to that, you can get Shadow Crash, which Shadow Crash applies Vampiric Touch to eight targets. And know that this does play with Misery. So if you have Misery talented with Shadow Crash, you apply Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch to eight targets on a fixed 30 second cooldown. So in general, it is harder to dot things in Dragonflight. But that being said, we do have some more ways to sustain our Zots than we would otherwise, mainly Mental Decay. Uh, so every tick of Mind Seer or Mind Flight extends your Dots on your targets that it's hitting. Uh, so obviously, the more you're weaving in Mind Seers, you know, the more that you can sustain the Dots that Shadow Crash, Misery, Dark Void, or whatever have applied. And um, that's going to be the main playstyle change going into AoE. The other large change I want to cover is Mind Spike. So Shadow has gotten a, a, a filler added back to its kit. So you can now choose between, uh, do you want to press Mind Flay or Mind Spike as your filler? And I say choose, this largely depends on the talents that you've chosen. Um, Mind, Spike is just, Mind Spike is just, you cast something, it does damage and gives you insanity. That's it. Um, in addition to that, you can talent into two things that buff Mind Spike. Surge of Darkness, which gives it a proc effect. Um, and then Mind Melt, which causes each Mind Spike uh, gives your next Mind Blast, uh, increased chance to crit, and reducing its cast speed. Um, so this playstyle is kind of interesting. Um, effectively, the, the TLDR for this is the more things you talent into Mind Spike, the more you're going to use Mind Spike as your filler. Or the more things you talent in that only buff Mind Flay, the more you're going to use Mind Flay as your filler. Um, so we have a, a, f a few talents that buff Mind Spike. So basically, the think of it is, the more talents you put into that, the more you're going to be putting Mind Spike as your filler, and vice versa. So the Mind Flay ones is where things get really interesting. So obviously Mental Decay that we already covered, you know, that's helping you sustain your dots while you're waiting for Shadow Crash cooldowns to come back. Um, you also have things like uh, Dark Evangelism, which just increases your periodic shadow damage. Um, you have uh, Mind Flay Insanity, which is a kind of returning spell. Effectively, you press Devouring Plague, it buffs your next Mind Flay, uh, but only the next one. Uh, and then you also have Screams of the Void and Idol of Cthulhu. So as you pick the things that really buff Mind Flay, the use cases for Mind Spike somewhat diminish. Um, so in the build I have now, I'm like basically talenting into almost every single Mind Flay buffing talent. Um, so because of that, Mind Spike is somewhat just there for if you get a Surge of Darkness proc and you can use that while moving, or if you don't have Mind Flay Insanity up, um, but your dots aren't going to fall off, that kind of thing. Um, it's kind of convoluted and complicated. Again, check out the Icy Veins guide if you want kind of more detail on when to use each filler. There should be a section at the bottom of the guide that goes over that. And then finally, the, lar the last change I want to cover is kind of the new talents that we got access to. A lot of these talents are just returning stuff. The things that are new that I want to point out specifically are the four idle talents. So we have four Old God Idle Talents at the bottom of our tree. Like I mentioned, in pre-patch, you're only going to be able to get one of these at a time because you're going to run out of points. Um, so the first one is Idol of Yashars. It's basically a Mindbender buffing uh, idol. We're not going to use this very much in pre-patch, specifically because right before it is Inescapable Torment, which is the current Shadowlands Shadowflame Prism Legendary. They do not stack. Uh, because of that, and just the strength of our legendaries in pre-patch, you're not going to be running this very often. But you do have Idle View Charge for Dragonflight launch, which might come into play more then. Uh, moving on, we have Idle of Cthune. Uh, similar to you Charge, this is... Um, will have mixed results in, in pre-patch. This is basically a buffed version of the Eternal Call to the Void legendary that we had have in Shadowlands. 
Um, like I said, it is slightly buffed and changed and reworked a little bit. Um, and this kind of flows well with Mind Flay and Sanity Screams of the Void down here. Um, effectively, you press Mind Flay and Mind Seer, you get a corresponding tendril to, to proc off that. Um, next guy, we have Idol of Yog saron This is somewhat like a, a mix of spread and stack cleave talent. It's got a really weird um, kind of place in our tree. Uh, basically, the more apparitions you summon, you'll spawn a pet, a thing from beyond, that blasts your main target for a good chunk of damage, and then that damage splashes to targets around it. Um, right now, this is kind of dependent on a bit of gear and scaling. I don't think you'll see much of this in pre-patch, although it'll come more into play in Dragonflight for sure. Uh, this talent also goes much better with Void, void Eruption and Void Form than does with Dark Ascension, because obviously we want to generate more apparitions, and Void Bolt is one of the few spells that does generate apparitions. Uh, so it does it does something that you know we, we do want with Yogg's Run. And then finally, we have Idol of Nazoth. This is kind of the AoE idol. Um, basically speaking, you, you spread your dots, you have a chance to apply another, another debuff to that target. Every time you apply one of those debuffs, you have a chance to collapse those stacks to deal AoE damage to targets around. It is not uncapped AoE, and you can only have four of those dots active at a time. Uh, but it does give us some amount of like passive AOE slash cleave in our kit. Um, and it's kind of targeted to be the more Mythic Plus focused idol. Um, and that's the kind of new idol that we have. So that is the very high level of kind of things that have changed. Like I said, if you want to get the full list of how Shadow plays now, you definitely want to check out the Icy Veins guide. Um, but for now, let's go, let's cover uh, talent builds before we move on. All right, guys, so I hopped on the PTR. Hopefully things are stable. Uh, Thurders haven't quite launched yet, but wanted to get started on, on actual builds that look a little bit nicer. Um, so I have a couple builds that I'll show you today as just kind of like starting points. And again, all these will be linked in the description below, or you can check out the IC Veins guides for more info. Um, and again, you want to use these as just a starting point. Like you don't need to follow exactly what I'm saying for everything. It's just, this is what I would suggest as a starting point based on really early Sims that we've done uh, to kind of get you into the spec in a way that's, you know, doing some damage. Um, so the first one that I'll cover is our single target Dark Ascension build. So this is going to be somewhat of a nice little default to use in single target. It uses Dark Ascension, Mind Flay, and Sanity. You do still have Mind Spike with this build, and then you are mainly doing Idol of C'Thun. Um, so this is kind of, you know, a, a nice little bread and butter, so to speak, uh, thing that we can use. It's not doing anything, you know, too crazy or anything like that. Um, and it kind of does a good job of getting you most of what you want. Um, from like a play style perspective, it's not going to play too differently than what you're used to. You're still going to put up dots. Um, you know, oh, I guess I still have I still have Twin Tops and Sanity Bar turned on. Oh, we, we probably don't want that on. It's going to be a little confusing. Um, so you're still going to put up dots. You know, you, you'll you'll still have some new stuff like Shadow Crash applying them. You have you you know Halo if you want it. The main change here is we now have Dark Ascension. So what we'll do is if you just like a quick little simple opener, you still do the kind of typical Shadow Flame Prism stuff. You press Dark Ascension, PI, and then you kind of go nuts with your rotation as normal. And just note that Mind Flay Insanity is in this build. So this is kind of what you're using as your new kind of activated filler, so to speak. Uh, in this build, you can still fill with Mind Spike if you don't have Mind Flay available. Although keep in mind, if your dots are falling off soon, you do kind of want to prioritize that just to be able to sustain your dots with Mental Decay. Um, so yeah, this build is going to have a little bit going on. You can see this does have Tendrils up proccing it as well. Um, it's a really kind of a filler focused rotation. Dark Ascension is not changing too much of what we're doing. In fact, there's really no rotational impact to it at all. Um, and really you're just kind of doing this as a proponent for everything else. So again, it is a little, um, I'll say it's a little untu in unintuitive to have Mind Flay Insanity and Mind Spike. Having the Mind Spike procs are pretty nice in terms of places where there is some downtime, especially if you want a Surge of Darkness proc while moving. That being said, some of you guys might be too overwhelmed with that, which is totally understandable. If we go for this build, oh, I'm in combat, so I can't, I guess I can't change things in combat. Um, so there's an alternative build that we can do instead that does not have, um, mind spike. So this build is very, very similar. Um, except instead of having all this, we give up mind spike to instead, uh, unfortunately to do that, you do have to put one point in this top section. And here I just pick mind seer, although you really won't use that in single target at all. You can also pick up last word or psychic horror if you'd rather have that. Um, and then you also grab maddening touch as well. So, um, 
Oops, it looks like this build, I, I missed out on a point here. So, oh, there it is. Okay, it's supposed to look like this. So with this build, this is effectively your, your option if you don't want to deal with Mind Spike. And it's going to play much, much simpler. You know, instead of coming in here, you're just going to put your dots up. Um, and then basically, you know, you're going to fill with Mind Flay as you normally would. You kind of want to be conscious of when that's a Mind Flay Insanity version of, of the spell so you don't, you know, cancel it early. And you can still press that during Dark Ascension, even though it's not buffed by Dark Ascension. The Insanity that you're getting from Mind Flay Insanity does lead to more Devouring Plagues or other spells. So it's still good. So this is a really good entry level build. It's, um, there's less things to press. It is a bit more punishing on movement. Because uh, you have you just don't have that surge of darkness proc for instant cast movement, but it's still I think a good build to to at least get started with if you're kind of new to shadow or just want to try out the spec. Um, so that's this build, and like I said, this will be all these will be linked uh, below. Um, now, if we move on, if you really want to try out a uh, void form and single target, um, uh, one build that I would suggest is a. This is so it's taking void form, and one of the purposes of void form is to work really well with Yog Saron. You get access to Void Bolt, which means you're generating more apparitions to get more chances of getting the Yog Saron pet. Um, I'm not going to show you how to get the how the Yog pet looks, as it's going to take a hot minute to get one to spawn. Um, but this is an alternative that doesn't use Mind Flay Insanity. That's kind of in on Yog Saron, which will have a bit of a different use case than I think DA or or Mind Flay Insanity. So not super like as single target focus, but definitely an option if you want to try out Void Form on single target. That'll be linked below as well. And again, should play very similarly to like what you're used to in Shadowlands, although with not pressing Void Bolt quite as often. Okay, so moving on to the AoE build. So I have two things for you guys if you want to try just as a starting point. The first one is this AoE Nazoth build. So it uses the new Idol of Nazoth um, and picks up Mind Seer and Psychic Link and Maddening Touch and drops some of the single target stuff that just has less use cases in AoE, mainly Mind Spike, um, Dark Evangelism, Mind Flay Insanity, that's, that all goes away. Um, and you can see for Idol of, Idol of Nazoth, I'll put my dots up on the target. Each tick of that dot has a chance to add this Echoing Void debuff to the target. And then every one of those applications gives you a chance for that to explode to targets in AoE. Um, so long story short, keep your dots up and you see that's it exploding out for AoE damage. Um, so that's Idol of Nazoth. It's gonna be pretty um, straightforward in the sense of in Mythic Plus, you basically just, you're trying to spread your dots as much as possible. And then you're kind of just relying on Psychic Link um, and Mind Seer for that a other AoE damage. Now, the other option to try on AoE is the, we're just gonna call this the No Idol build. Since Nazoth has some downsides in AoE, another option is to run a build without using any idol spell. And this is very similar, except now instead of picking up Insidious Ire, which isn't really helpful on AoE, we're instead using those points on these three points elsewhere. You pick up a point of Mind Devour, you get Screams of the Void um, just to get your dots to tick more. Um, it's just an option if you if you want to try it out. It's not substantially different, but it is something uh, something to try. And again, those are just kind of starter builds. Like I said, you can feel free to experiment with other parts. This is just kind of the avenues and lanes that we've found that, that perform generally generally well. So try these out. Let me know what you guys think. All right, so quickly going to talk about your covenant choice uh, for pre-patch. So uh, long story short, um, we get mind games inside of our class tree. We don't get value out of getting mind games again by being Venthyr. Um, and generally, you know, we've already known that Venthyr is kind of already a, a worse version, or like not a great covenant on single target, especially. Um, there are some options. You can still run Theotar if you want to try it out. You just don't get that extra covenant ability. It just doesn't work right. Uh, Unity is kind of nice, especially now that manipulation is reducing the cast or the seat. You're getting more mind games out effectively, but just generally kind of inferior. Um, Kyrian is definitely um, an option to use, although we really have spent no time optimizing SimC for Kyrian. It will not work inside of SimC. We just don't have it in there. We just haven't had time to figure out how it plays. Theoretically, though, Kyrian playing with Dark Ascension should feel better, especially with access to Mind Spike. Um, so that is an option. Although, generally speaking, for most people, I suggest you just stick with Necrolord and using the Marleth uh, Soulbind specifically. With the change in Dragonflight, we don't have as much crit scaling, so I don't think High Mirror is as valuable or useful in Mythic Plus. So just going Necrolord Marleth is going to be good for most people. 
Uh, you could certainly try out Night Fae if you want. They did make Fae Guardians work with Dark Ascension and Void Eruption, which is pretty sweet. You get basically two back-to-back -back uses of Dark Ascension with um, every time you use it, which is a pretty pretty solid cooldown. Um, and again, you can still use Dreamweaver with Dark Ascension, although Nia might be good as well if you want to try that out with Dark Ascension. So those are options as well. That's kind of what I would suggest for your Covenant. Um, now, the other thing is going to be Conduit. So I don't really have a whole lot to show you here, but your 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 basic conduit setup ignore this as venthyr is just what my ptr character is you want to use haunting apparitions and rabid shadows all the time in terms of your potency conduits um and then mind devourer is going to be the kind of default slotted in third choice um so use those three for most things now if you're taking one of the builds that i've talked about earlier specifically the yog saran one that took uh point into mind devourer or just in general if you're using the talent version of mind devourer you don't want to also use the conduit they don't stack uh so because of that if you're using that drop mind devourer for dissonant echoes instead and that's kind of how that will work um you know with the endurance and finesse pick what pick whatever you want a lot of stuff is going to be weird or not stacking you know welcome to uh welcome to pre-patch um and then on to kind of other things to keep in mind with pre-patch uh we'll talk about stats briefly so like i already kind of mentioned uh critical strike is kind of down in the drain a little bit they removed quite a lot of our crit scaling you know hungering void is gone the way that apparition crit scaling is significantly different um and just in general crit is just a less valuable stat for us um some other things that are contributing to this is we get more than we usually had with Ancient Madness being kind of baseline now, uh, since you can easily get it in the talent tree. As well as if you are playing Mind Melt for anything, you know, the need to have a lot of crit on Mind Blast is also significantly reduced. So basically, crit just kind of is getting lower in value. Um, Haste and Mastery are still going to be your top two stats. Although I will say, depending on the talent choices that you're using, you might find yourself indexing more into Haste than you have been previously. Um, it seems where some builds are haste is clearly better than mastery and some are haste is equal to mastery but in general that's the priority that you want to follow for stats um, and in general you can kind of follow the rest of this keep in mind though with that change to crit value um, trinkets like Kabbalah's hymnal or others that you know are basically just buffing your crit chance are going to be less valuable and potentially will sim worse that is expected um, haven't done a whole lot of like deep uh, testing or, or looking at you know Trinkets for pre-patch specifically, but just note that your sims will probably reflect that change that is expected. All right, so let's kind of cover basic rotation stuff before we call it. All right, so I'm not going to go over <laughs> line by line the rotation, um, mostly because this is going to be tweaked and changed quite often in the next couple days and weeks especially. Um, but I'll just kind of show you what we have and what I've written in the IC Vance Guide. So first things first, you can come over here and kind of select the talents that you're currently running. So if you have Mind Spike, if you have Dark Ascension, Surge of Darkness, Shadow Crash, Mindbender, anything like this, you'll want to check the stuff that you're currently taking. Um, Inescapable with Torment and Shadow Flame Prism, if you have either, I would check this for pre-patch. Um, and this will give you kind of your basic, or not so basic, pretty in-depth look at what the rotation is going to look like. I suggest, you know, uh, read it once, try it out on a dummy, read it a second time, try it out, and you'll keep like picking up nuggets of how things work. Again, a lot of it's going to be somewhat similar to what we're used to inside of Shadowlands. Um, but there are some distinct changes that I've mentioned before. Namely, things like Mind Spike really change what we're doing. Um, so I gave you a bit of stuff. You see, here's your single target priority. Here's like a basic opener. Uh, you have, uh, and then a few breakdowns for three to seven targets and then eight plus targets and kind of showing you how things change slightly on those two changes. Um, I go into a little bit with... Um, you know, maintaining dots and kind of what you're doing on AOE. And then I have a, a other sections on here about specific stuff. There's one on like mind spike versus mind flay. Um, but for the most part, you know, things should be somewhat familiar to you, especially if you played Shadowlands with the Shadow Flame Prism Legendary. A lot of that is going to play, you know, like what we, what we did before. Um, the main changes are going to be primarily around, we have a couple more things to weave into our rotation now, like mind games, uh, Halo, Divine Star, that kind of stuff, depending on how many targets that you're fighting. Um, obviously, the more talents that you take that are active, the more this will change. Um, AoE is definitely more similar to what we had in Shadowlands. Or sorry, single target is similar to what we had in Shadowlands. AoE is going to be pretty different without Searing Nightmare. That one's going to take a bit more time for you to get used to. Um, so the primary thing to really get down is when to use each filler. 
So check out the guide below and it kind of, I think looking at a, a written version is the best just to say like, okay, this is clearly, I'll use Mind Spike here, I'll use Mind Flay Insanity when these conditions are met, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'll try to do add as much detail as I can to the guide because that's really the kind of the main question mark with the rotation of like, hey, I got a Surge of Darkness proc. When do I weave that in, right? Uh, especially versus Mind Flay Insanity for, you know, Screams, all, the, all these kind of talents that change that choice specifically. Um, but yeah, as far as like when you're doing things else in single target, it should be pretty similar. Now, again, like I mentioned, AOE is going to have where the, the bulk of the changes are. Basically, it's going to come down to a couple steps. Step one, spread your dots with whatever possible, whether it's Misery, Dark Void, Shadow Crash, you know, spread your dots. Um, and then you kind of go into Mindbender uh, and the typical Shadow Flame Prism or Inescapable Torment rotation. You know, cast your cooldowns when you can. Um, always sync Power Infusion up with that. Use any racial stuff that you have. And then you're effectively filling with Psychic Link damage, which is casting things like Mind Blast, Mind Flay, etc. with Psychic Link active on any targets with Vampiric Touch. Um, and then, you know, using your filler spells and kind of waiting to spend your insanity on Mind Seer specifically. Um, so you can see, obviously, this A plus target priority doesn't really make any sense because you need to come over here and check Mind Seer. So make sure you're using these check marks if you're using my guide. Otherwise, it's going to omit certain things that won't, won't make sense. So... Um, and that's that's kind of the, the bulk of what we're doing here um, for this rotation. So hope hope this helps. If you have questions, you can leave comments here or down below or message me wherever. Um, but that's it for this video, guys. Big thanks to everyone that's supporting me on Twitch, YouTube, Patreon. I appreciate all the support. It really means a lot to me. I'm going to be very... <laughs> a lot of stuff is coming in, in the works uh, soon. So you'll see a lot of things get posted. Uh, uh, so I'll be a little busy, but I'll try to get things out as soon as I can. So hope this has been helpful. Enjoy pre-patch. We'll see you in Dragonflight.